Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I wanted to explore a blue-white flash deck, mainly built around Avon Interrupter from the latest set, a 3-mana 2-2 with flash and flying, and when it enters the battlefield, exile target spell, it becomes plotted. So we have to cast Interrupter in response to the opponent casting a spell to temporarily exile it, and then spells your opponents cast from graveyards or from exile cost 2 generic mana or more to cast, so if we can keep the Interrupter on the battlefield, all those plotted cards will also cost two more, and since the Interrupter itself also plots a card, that means the opponent will have to pay at least two mana to replay their spell. So the Interrupter can be pretty good, especially if it starts exiling more expensive spells from the opponent, since we can kind of gain a mana advantage to try to tempo the opponent out while we start attacking with our flying creatures, which now also include two copies of Stoic Sphinx, a 4-mana 5-3 with flash and flying, and it has hexproof as long as we haven't cast a spell this turn. So in a deck where we can play everything at instant speed, it's going to make it pretty awkward for the opponent to try to remove the Sphinx, since they would have to keep all their mana untapped and then maybe cast something at instant speed in their own end step if we also cast something and if we're ahead on board then again we can just decide not to cast anything and then maybe ride the sphinx to victory but in other games we can still play spells at instant speed in the opponent's end step if they're tapped out and preserve hexproof on the sphinx as much as possible so this has also been a great addition for the archetype. Then another payoff in the flash deck is Errant and Jada, a 2-3 flash flying. It says we can look at the top card of our library at any time and cast spells with either flash or flying from the top of our library. So that can also provide a nice bit of card advantage. And then we have more flying creatures at 2 mana with Fairy Mastermind, which can punish the opponent for drawing extra cards, as well as Malcolm, which can draw additional cards ourselves to kind of sculpt our hand as we keep hitting the opponent over and over. Over. So those are kind of the flying creatures that are hoping to end the game. And then we have additional counter spells besides the Interrupter, which is kind of a pseudo counter spell. We can also just cast No More Lies, which is one of the best counter spells printed in recent times. And then we have some instant speed removal as well, including Elspeth's Smite to deal 3 to an attacking or blocking creature and exiling it in the process. Exiling also relevant against certain creatures in standard. And then we have Soul Partition, which is a very flexible removal spell, can exile any non-land permanents and then the opponent can replay it, but for 2 additional mana. And if we also have Avon Interrupter on the battlefield, that 2 additional mana will be added once again, since the opponent is trying to cast a spell from exile, so now it will cost them 4 additional mana to replay replay and hopefully we'll just have killed the opponent in the meantime. So Soul Partition and Avon Interrupter are a match made in heaven and we could easily play the full playset of Soul Partition but I ended up with a 2-2 two two split between Soul Partition and the White March which we can also maybe cast on turn 1 by pitching a white spell if we're maybe on the draw against an aggro deck that can be worth it. And then our author removal also includes two copies of the Werefox Bodyguard which is a flash creature that can exile an opposing creature when it enters for as long as we control it. And and then at 4 mana we've got the Wandering Emperor to exile tapped creatures. And topping off our curve there's the Whale, which we can first adventure for 2 mana to maybe uh, bounce an attacking creature back to the top of the opponent's deck or bottom. It's their choice. And then afterwards a nice 6-6 six, six that we can also flash in. If we want it to be untapped we will have to play it during our own turn, but uh, we've got some nice flexibility there. So still a great card for any flash strategy. And then also have two copies of Virtue of Loyalty, which can make a 2-2 knight at instant speed. And then later the enchantment can also start growing the team if we kind of need to go over the top if there's a bit of a board stall happening, for instance. And then also very nice alongside Stoic Sphinx, as we can now untap it and play defense with it as well. And then rounding out the deck, we've got two copies of Tishana's Tidebinder, also a great card that sees quite a bit of play, especially in best of three standard. There's a lot of abilities you can counter with it, and then it can shut down those creatures as well. Also a nice answer to an Atraxa, since we can counter the card draw ability, even though Atraxa may be uncounterable through a Cavern of Souls. So that's also an important interaction to keep in mind. And then uh, two copies of Memory Deluge as another card draw spell that we can flash back. So it can provide a bit more card advantage for those grindy matchups. And I think that covers our main deck. And as you can tell, there's not too many cards that we will lose after rotation. March can easily be replaced by two more copies of Soul Partition. And then, of course, Wandering Emperor goes away alongside Memory Deluge. But we can just play more copies of Stoic Sphinx. So there's not too many cards that will rotate out. And then in our mana base, all the Innistrad dual lands will rotate out, including Deserted Beach. And then the Channel lands will also go away. But those will affect almost every deck in Standard. So not a huge loss for this deck. And then we're still playing 
with two copies of Blast Zone, that one will stay. can also be very effective at dealing with a bunch of one-drops out of the aggressive decks, since that can be a weakness of a strategy like this if the opponent gets on the board quickly with a lot of cheap spells, so that's where Blast Zone can maybe catch us back up. And then we can also slowly take it up to deal with larger permanents, so it also plays well in a flash strategy where we want to keep all our mana untapped. And then a Restless Anchorage, also an important creature land that can help close out the game, and then the map tokens can also provide a bit more value. And then we've got more dual lands with a Darker Waste and Seacrum Coast, so we'll still have plenty of blue-white dual lands going forward. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we have a Keepable Hand. Missing a second white source for the Interrupter, but otherwise pretty versatile hand. And being on the play with a deck like this is always appreciated. Because we're not great at playing from behind, but if we have a good footing into the game, then we can kind of preserve our early advantage. Opponent on a Sultai deck with Dread Knight, so it looks mid-rangey in nature. Um, yeah, Dread Knight hits pretty hard. Don't know if I want to use a No More Lies just yet, since we cannot play Interrupter. So I think we let that resolve, play Malcolm, and then find an answer to the Dread Knight later. Elspeth's Might is a great one, since it exiles the creature in question. Probably should have attacked first in case we drew a white source here. Alright, so now I don't get to keep up Interrupter, but we still have Errant and Jada and No More Lies. And then what to discard is a question. Might be Odawara, could be Deluge, since we have a lot of other things we can do with our mana. And it still has flashbacks, so it does good value. So ideally we don't have to counter anything, so we can play Errant. And then we'll have a nice card draw engine on the battlefield. And then we can kind of keep our shields up. Yeah, another Dread Knight's fine. Currently we're not winning the race, but we can always find some answers or, uh, I guess, set up our Blast Zone. Drawing a second Malcolm, not the best. They might have a cut down here for Errant. Yeah, we're just gonna discard Malcolm to Malcolm. And another No More Lies. Okay. So now we can keep up the Interrupter. Taking six. And Augur, I don't mind countering here. Next turn they can replay it for two mana. Still a good tempo play. And Wandering Emperor is great against the Dread Knight. But let's see what we draw first. A land. Yeah, maybe I can get rid of Odawara. And then playing Deserted Beach keeps up both copies of No More Lies, or we can Wandering Emperor. If they have a fifth land, they can play Augur, and I wouldn't be able to counter it since they can pay three. If they play Augur right away, then um, I might counter it. If they just go straight to attackers, I'm also tempted to just Wandering Emperor, so we save ourselves a bit of damage. And this also exiles, so the Dread Knight's not coming back. This is what you get. We can also look into activating the Restless Anchorage to increase our pressure in the air. So we maybe have a two-tron clock. A land off the top, so they're immediately getting value. And a Glissa, yeah, that's a good one. Now we can also get a fourth count from Malcolm, so we can start casting spells for free. So finding something expensive would be nice here. And then, yeah, I guess we're just gonna attack with Anchorage, as opposed to using Blast Zone. And then Emperor makes a Samurai on the ground, I guess. And we 
we drew a Virtue of Loyalty, perfect. So cast that for free, and I'll go with the enchantment side of things. Well, that was a lucky top deck. Make a Samurai, grow the team, still have no more lies up. Yeah, don't often get to see Malcolm's ability go off, but we played it on turn two, and it went undisrupted. Glissa can destroy our enchantment, potentially, but they're still facing lethal in the air. So, I think I'm okay maybe trading for the Dread Knight. Glissa destroys my enchantments, and then we still have three lethal attackers next turn. They could also remove counters, but yeah, they go for Virtue. And now a Frillback we can counter, otherwise they could have uh, maybe gained enough life to survive. Also interesting to note is that the Interrupter is great against Adventures, the Dread Knight costing 4 mana here. So, also good to keep in mind, and our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn 2, we have a No More Lies. Can play the planes. If I draw Seacrum Coast, I maybe save myself a bit of damage. Or Islands would do it too. Cavern of Souls naming human, not what you want to see when holding double No More Lies. The Interrupter can still maybe exile a spell, but uh, yeah, no more lies, wouldn't be able to counter Rona. Could main phase the Bodyguard to exile it, or we could use Tidebinder in response to an activation to shut it down. So I'll wait and see. Yeah, you know what, maybe it's fine to let this resolve and then counter the untapped trigger if they cast another spell. So we keep them guessing, but they do get an extra loot in the meantime. Close call. I guess we'll let this resolve for now. Put on discarding Endenic, and now Gwena is next. So I think it's Tidebinder, Arona. Possible our opponent is on a 5 color Joda deck, and that's what they're kind of ramping towards. Now I can main phase Bodyguard to get rid of Gwena. Prevent them from ramping. And then even Interrupter could be a way to temporarily slow down Joda from uh, entering the battlefield. So now Rona's just a 1-3 with no fancy abilities. And the Partners is a good one. Also has Reach, so it gets in the way of my Flyers. Alright, so not what we wanted to see here. Soul Partition and Answer. Yeah, I guess we may as well. Keep attacking. Now six mana to replay, so it's going to be a while. And with Interrupter on the battlefield, it's going to be two more. Do they have Joda? It's going to be Malira instead, that's uncounterable. Let that one slide, can maybe counter their next creature. Although right now we can't really make any attacks on the ground anymore. Take our turn. Errant and Jada was a good pickup. So we'll pass. So they can replay partners, but there's Joda. So yeah, definitely need to use the interrupter here. But yeah, next turn they can still replay it. Alright, another Avon Interrupter is great, so that can slow down Joda for another turn. So, can start attacking in the air. Now if they're not careful and uh, maybe don't use Cavern of Souls, then there's a chance I can still no more lies. Alright, opponent with another uncounterable Joda. I guess that's the best case scenario, because now they'll both cost 4 mana to replay. Yep, 
Although it's still gonna hit like a truck who wants to actually resolve it. And a Verge of Loyalty can grow the team. So I think it's time to just tap out for Virtue. And then they can replay Joda and maybe trigger it once. But hopefully that's not enough to completely take over. And we just need to keep our Aven Interrupters alive. So yeah, even through Cavern of Souls, which was very good with double No More Lies in hand, the Interrupter can still be very effective. Alright, Tiny Bones won't find any other Legends since there's no zero mana legendaries in standard, but still grows the team. So threatening 14 damage, which is not quite enough. And the partners costing 10 mana now is pretty funny. So our opponents might still have a channel land to interact here. I Ganja to deal for damage, Odawara to bounce a creature. That's the only potential interaction they have left. They might also be on empty and they've uh, disconnected here. Certainly a possibility. All right, get to untap. Opponent still holding priority, maybe with Malira. But this uh, kind of confirms our theory that they might have disconnected. In which case, we don't have to worry about any channel lanes. Otherwise, we also have the option of main phasing Errant and Jada to see if we can find something on the top of our deck that could maybe be useful. Because yeah, we are building a pretty delicate house of cards here. If they remove one interrupter, all of a sudden they can play the partners and uh, our house of cards comes crumbling down. But no, opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Facing black-red. And Tiny Bones joins up. So maybe a legendary crime deck. For now, can discard a Seachrome Coast, I think. Play Anchorage, turn to Seachrome, keep up no more lies. Although turn to Magda is a good one, especially with Tiny Bones, they can immediately make a treasure. So that's a great start. Don't think we Soul Partition Magda yet. Keep up our Counterspell. So yeah, we already have some catching up to do. Hope they just tap out for some expensive 4-mana card, so we can leverage our 2-mana counter spell. Opponent does nothing. Do we want to Soul Partition Magda? They can just replay it for 4-mana, and re-trigger Tiny Bones joins up, and make another treasure, so nah, I don't think I do. But now we can maybe use the Bodyguard. Intimidation campaign. That's a good one to counter, so they can keep looping it back. It did slightly mess up our sequencing in the sense that it would have been more mana efficient to cast a 3-drop last turn and then maybe have double 2-drop available. Now Insatiable Avarice just to draw 3. Yeah, I think I'm happy to use the Interrupter here. If they replay it once they plot it, they'll still have to pay the double black again. So that starts getting pretty expensive. And then now Soul Partition also gets better with the Interrupter out, but can expect it to get removed here. Right, put on Bouncing the Interrupter, triggers Magda. Not the end of the world since it still gets plotted. And then we can just use Interrupter once again if we'd like. So do I want to do anything else here, like Soul Partition on Magda? No, I think we can wait. Alright, Marchesa. That's a good one. So that's maybe our target for either Bodyguard or Soul Partition. So if Marchesa resolves, it does trigger Tiny Bones, since that's a way of committing a crime. So they could immediately draw. So I think it's worth it to just uh, use the Aven Interrupter right away. And now this is also taxed. 
And I maybe should have used Soul Partition in response to the Interrupter trigger so they didn't have a chance to commit another crime. Okay, so this is kind of where we want to be with our opponents on an empty board. We're applying pressure. And we have a bunch of spells we can cast at instant speed. We can play Tapped Anchorage and then Deluge. So yeah, these are all pretty expensive. Opponent replaying a Marchesa for two mana. Can maybe exalt with a bodyguard. That opponent will be paying one to draw off tiny bones. Okay, I think we let this one slide and then just plan to deluge and then maybe bodyguard next turn. Hoping they can cheaply commit another crime. Alright, they have a negate. That's too bad. And they can pay the one. Maybe should have uh, responded with Deluge to the Marchesa trigger in case they picked up the negate just now. Gets rid of a shield root, so they must have found some good ones. Alright, time to deal with Marchesa. And finding another Interrupter is not bad, since they do get better in multiples. Now it's all about tempoing the opponent out, activating our creature land a bunch. And this Chandra is quite scary, since it can deal with two creatures at once. Now it's going to be four mana for them to replace, it's still pretty realistic. But uh, yeah, we can send in both copies of Anchorage and get the opponent pretty low. So Chandra may not be enough to save them. Bones are two. Magda costing eight mana now. Two from Soul Partition, four more from Avon Interrupter. And burn down the house, making devils. Yeah, that probably wasn't a plan, but even if they wipe the board, then we still have Anchorage to cross the finish line, so I don't think it would have made a difference. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Doesn't have a very clear game plan for turns two and three necessarily. But if we're up against aggro, we have answers. Turn one scout. So this may be a mono green aggro deck. Don't think I'll be removing the scout with any of my removal spells. Opponent plotting an alchemist. Okay, I guess now this starts looking a bit better. I think we still used a whale, because then they're forced to maybe redraw the scout, which isn't the best creature to necessarily find. So they might put it on the bottom. And then march is maybe a bit more versatile. Now Interrupter is nice too. Would love to play it before they get a chance to cast their plotted card. Okay, put on plotting a trailblazer now. Alright, let's just use Interrupter on the Alchemist now, and then Trailblazer is going to cost him two extra mana as well. It does become plotted, so I guess it does trigger here. That's a weird interaction. And there's another Interrupter. I could even main phase it just to tax these even more. But uh, I'll wait and see what else they do. So some very unusual interactions here with Interrupter and other plot cards. So they could play both, but that's most of their turn. Opponent's gonna keep plotting another Trailblazer. Okay. I think we can Deluge and then wait on Interrupter until next turn, and why not get another one? Could also go Mastermind plus Interrupter, since we can play both in the same turn. Yeah, I guess I don't really need the land. Uh, Arent and Jada's nice too, but I think this is good enough. And a no more lies. Well, if there's ever a matchup to showcase the strength of Avon Interrupter, it's this one. So I think we can just pass, let them maybe play something from Exile, and then use Interrupter and uh, take it from there, basically. Although main phasing it would make it cost two more 
from the start. So that's plotted again, and the opponent concedes before we show them the third Avon Interrupter. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. I've got a keepable hand. Although turn one mountain, not exactly what we want to see, since our hand is pretty reactive. So they can already cast Ruckus next turn. Alright, they're plotting once again. So opponent stuck on one land might be our saving grace. Because now we can counter whatever two mana creature they play. Opponent passes. Now we can start playing at instant speeds. Elspeth's Might could also come in handy. So yeah, all it takes is that one extra turn to keep up a counter spell, and all of a sudden we're in the driver's seat. Don't mind if this gets removed by a lightning strike since we have another one. This one we might want to try and protect. So yeah, maybe our opponent just had a handful of burn spells and demonic ruckus and no creatures. Which is usually a hand you would mulligan. But maybe they were just being patient on Godric. Can't afford to let that resolve because then Smite cannot answer it once they play demonic ruckus. Now we have Errant and Jada and no more lies available. We will need some more curve toppers here to turn the corner. Finding more flash creatures would help. I will now fight over Lightning Strike. Double play with fire would be acceptable. Play with fire shock. Okay, so nice two for one. And we still have our Aaron Tanjada. And may as well start attacking. Now our opponent could still top deck a slick shot and uh, kill us out of nowhere, basically. Maybe get the extra plus one count from Errant and Jada, since we know we're drawing into a No More Lies. Which I will keep on top, although there is a one turn window where they can top deck something scary. Alright, they were bound to draw a creature at some point. At least Swiss Spear will deal a bit of burst damage right now, but we can still outrace it, since it will shrink down next turn again. Land on top. So this can activate. Draw the land. Using our map token. And keep no more lies available. So I haven't found any flash cards or flyers to play with Arant and Jada. Ancestral Anger resolves. Can counter their next play. But our opponent knows about it, so they'll likely try and play around it. No? I guess Swiss Spear I could also smite. So we'll maybe do that instead. Alright, another land on top. So it could be that if I attack and our opponent draws another Ancestral Anger, for instance. But I think we need to keep digging for more answers. Staying back to double block is also a little sketchy. And if this dies, our opponent gets to draw two cards, so then they get to pull ahead. So yeah, get rid of the land. And a bodyguard, alright, so that's a game changer. So now we have an answer at the ready. Opponent plotting a slick shot since it didn't want to play into a no more lies. So yeah, we should have it here. I guess if I play bodyguard, is this a May ability? Up to one, so we don't have to exile Swiss Spear. Otherwise, Demonic Ruckus will trigger and they get to draw two, which might mess up my uh, sequencing. And now Whale coming up too, so no need to exile anything. Can just take three and then animate Anchorage and attack for the win. Tidebinder also would have been nice. So we finally started finding our flash creatures here. Sweet, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Have a lot of two mana plays. Interrupter on three, and then uh, Virtue of Loyalty in the late game. Turn one Swamp, and a Concealing a Curtains. Hand Disruption in general is pretty good against our deck, so not a card we love to see. Opponent's going to be packing some cheap removal spells, which are also good against our Aven Interrupter and Mastermind. For now, just an underdog. So we can play Mastermind. Malcolm would have been slightly better on turn two here. Okay, so pass it back. And our opponent's going to activate the curtains. That's fine. So they can take the Interrupter if they'd like. We'll get a replacement card. And then we can maybe use our token to trade for the underdog. Alright, opponent takes Virtue instead. So now I'm just tempted to take 5 and play Malcolm to get that going. And then next turn I can keep up Soul Partition Mastermind or even Interrupter. And then Blast Zone also a pretty cheap answer to the curtains at some point. Tidebinder would have been a pretty nice answer to the uh, trigger here. Probably could have waited to attack first and then play my land in case we found something else, but Blast Zone is pretty good. Found an island, do we want to keep that one? Yeah, I mean, it does allow me to double spell 3 plus 2 next turn, but we're maybe gonna double 2 drop here. So yeah, maybe island is not that useful. I kind of want to keep Interrupter plus Soul Partition, since those are goods together. So I think it's either Tidebinder or Island that goes. Yeah, maybe this Tidebinder, just because we also have Blast Zone and Anchorage we can put to use, so the extra mana is useful. So ideally they tap out for an expensive 4 mana play. So we can use Interrupter and then Soul Partition can answer that same card once again, or maybe the Revealing Eye. And we really want to keep applying pressure here. A visage of a Dread. So we have to reveal our hands and they get to take a creature. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, use Interrupter on that since they might take it anyways. Although if they do, we can still go Mastermind plus Soul Partition. If they take Mastermind, we still have Interrupter available. So yeah, maybe that's fine actually. And then Crafting is going to cost 6 mana, so I'm not too worried about it. And let's take the Interrupter. And then, yeah, maybe it's just Soul Partition, the Revealing Eye, and play Mastermind. And then it's going to cost him a lot of mana to play and retransform it. So hopefully in the meantime we can do some damage. And a Counterspell doesn't hurt. So I think we keep that up as opposed to attack with Anchorage. We might still have a two-turn clock, since we can activate Anchorage next turn. Should have waited to play my land until we see what we draw with Malcolm, of course. But uh wasn't gonna keep that one. Alright. And now Shieldreds we can counter, and that should be game, since we can just activate Anchorage. Although regardless, our opponent would have been dead on board, even if we didn't counter Shieldreds. Assuming they didn't go swamp into cut down, I guess. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and this hand feels a little too clunky. Two lands, lots of three and four drops, and our mana's going to be painful as well. This is better. Probably need to keep March in case we're up against aggro, so we can maybe catch back up. And then we have two four drops, but they're both pretty nice. But I think one of them has to go... I mean, Sphinx plus Virtue does go pretty hard, can present a fast clock. Or we could grab Deluge and try and play a more controlling game where we draw a few extra cards. But maybe when we're behind here, we just want to get them dead quickly. And Sphinx into Virtue of Loyalty 
could maybe get there. Put on black white. And the Rafine's Informant, so this may be a graveyard combo deck. Getting rid of a Flash Gorger. Okay. Not opposed to trading a 2 2 Knight for the Informant here. What we really want is to find some counter spells, or even Interrupter can also maybe make graveyard synergies more expensive. For now, we'll see if we get to trade, or if they have a removal spell. Can always march the informant next turn. The trade happens. And another one. Okay, we'll see what else they can discard. A bitter triumph, and we found a no more lies, so we've got our counter spell. Probably gonna take three from Informant and then keep up my counter spell. And if I don't need to use it, we can maybe march Informant end of turn. But yeah, taking three for the privilege of keeping up your counter spell is worth it here. That's one of the core principles of playing a control deck. And a Flesh Gorger's next. Yeah, I think I counter that one. It's going to be difficult to outrace even with our Sphinx and Virtue combo. And it's going to be painful to exile with our March. Not entirely sure what the opponent's deck looks like. Maybe it's just black-white mid-range of sorts. Can flash in the Sphinx now, but can do so end of turn. Keep the opponent on their toes. Ideally they tap out, so I can go Sphinx and maybe tap out for Virtue of Loyalty without fearing instant speed removal. Opponent's got another informant. Getting rid of Iganjo. And yeah, play Sphinx, but our opponent does have three mana available. So if I main phase tap out for Virtue and they have a go for the throat, we're gonna be pretty sad. But they're still going to be able to use Go for the Throw it next turn, potentially. Since we're currently not winning the race, so I'm going to have to cast another spell at some point. But I can maybe make the timing a little awkward for them by not letting them cast removal end of turn, and then just pass with Masterminds and some removal available. And then Virtue is also going to be a little bit better if we have multiple creatures in play that can pick up a counter. Right, opponent attacks. So I'm not opposed to marching the informants. That's a bit bigger. And then we'll still have Mastermind available. But now the Sphinx no longer has Hexproof. Now we can also soul partition our own card. Just to kind of save it from removal and then replay it afterwards. It only taxes the opponent's spells. Playing Igancho and now an Invasion of Tolvara, which can get back a Flash Gorger. Yeah, that's a good one. That happens. So I think the plan now is Soul Partition the Flash Gorger. It is going to cost me a lot of life. But then replaying Flash Gorger is going to be more expensive. And in the meantime, we get to apply pressure with the Virtue of Loyalty. And a No More Lies will come in handy too. I think it's still a good window for Virtue. They can play a small Flash Gorger, but that one we should be able to handle. And we can block the Informant now. Thresher, okay. They might have some flicker effects to kind of upgrade their prototype creatures, since those have good synergy. Maybe they're playing the new mounts. There's a 3 mana 2-4 that can flicker stuff. One card left in hand, opponent passes. And uh, yeah, now with two counter spells essentially available, we should be able to close it out. 
things will be back on defense thanks to Virtue of Loyalty. So hopefully this is checkmate. Only really have to cast a spell if our opponent is about to present lethal or maybe find an answer to the Sphinx. Or if they tap out, then we're also safe to go for it. Another invasion of Tolvada. That's fine, can get back Rafine's informant. I don't really mind. But we also could have countered since we have two counter spells in hand now. Yeah, Virtue of Loyalty plus Stoic Sphinx is a pretty sweet combo. And they also curve nicely into each other, 4 drop into 5 drop. Opponents out of cards, and they seem very dead now. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. We have either a counterspell or Malcolm on 2. And then Malcolm can maybe help sculpt our hand. Red-white. Don't often see Elegant Parlor in the tokens deck, so it might be something else. Alright, a Naya colored deck. Maybe your opponent's going big with dinosaurs. For now, attack, see what we draw. Smite's probably not going to be at its best in this matchup, if I had to guess. A whale's probably better. And then... Play Anchorage, keep up no more lies. Opponent passes once again, pick up Bodyguard. Can attack. And what to get rid of? I do want to keep hitting my land drops, but maybe one can still go for now. And then we should be able to use these soon. Alright, Cavern on Human, so no more lies now doesn't work. I have run into this Naya fight rigging type of deck before. So we can just counter the uh, fight rigging now. And our opponent's got a 3 2 in play, which is not the end of the world. Okay. Memory Dally should be good to cast. I think Whale as an adventure is still useful in this matchup, but it's unclear what to get rid of. Maybe it is the Bodyguard, because if I exile an Appraiser and they remove it, maybe using the Carnosaur to deal 3 damage, which I wouldn't be able to counter, then I get to retrigger the Appraiser, which could be bad. So Bodyguard might be a little risky. And then we still have the whale to bounce attacking creatures. Ooh, Ilishnorn to stop ETB effects, at least that one we can counter. And then I could still channel because we have a legend, but I think I'll just take three since I don't really want to bounce the appraiser either. And now Malcolm gets a fourth counter so we can start playing spells for free. And uh, either putting a whale in play or a free wandering emperor sounds good. Let's go with a whale now that we drew another one. Play a line and pass. Alright, so points at 12. Malcolm doing a lot of work. And angel fire, that's fine. We'll have vigilance, so wandering emperor doesn't work, but the whale can still bounce. And then I can play Emperor, since we might have lethal here. Make a Samurai. And then if I animate Anchorage, we should get there. Can still add a counter somewhere. Let's maybe put it on the whale in case they have removal. Alright, looks like we got there. 
Sweet, and we get to rank up here as well. Awesome. Well, we got to showcase this blue-eyed flash strategy quite nicely. The deck can suffer if it starts on the draw, and if it's up against a very aggressive deck that can put a lot of cheap permanents on the battlefield, since we're not playing any board wipes. And then on the other end of the spectrum, another bad matchup I think is the domain decks, since they can make their angels uncounterable through Cavern of Souls, and then we don't really have a great way to stop some of their curve toppers, other than maybe the tight binder can still counter an Atraxa trigger, so that can maybe help, but our deck might not have enough pressure to really tempo them out early, and then the late game typically favors the domain strategies. But the good news is that the domain decks will lose all the trial lands in the upcoming rotation, whereas our deck doesn't lose too many key cards, so a blue-white flash deck could still exist going forward. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.